tales and takes with Preeti brings to you tales of wonder from lands far and near, stories of inspiration from people ever so dear, and a little bit of me, Preeti, also known as Peppy Travel Girl. Hey everyone, and welcome to Travel Tales and Takes with Preeti. As promised, Travel Tales and Takes brings to you stories from my travels, conversations with people who travel to some beautiful places and have some wonderful stories to share, and a lot more. And today we're doing a pep tale. This episode is all about an unexpected experience in a beautiful European city from my very first solo trip. Something I love about solo travel, I think it's definitely the fact that you can do whatever you want. So you made a plan. Do you want to follow it? Dump it? You decide. You want to eat an entire plate of fries? Do it. Cross something interesting on the street and want to just stop and stare? Uh, yes, please. This has happened to me more times than I can count. And come with me to Vienna today and I'll tell you about how all it took was one single step when I threw my plans out the window and just did what felt right. The rain had just about started easing up. I was huddled up in the West Bernhoff station waiting for the skies to clear just so I could begin my day. A whole day of exploring the beautiful city of Vienna had received a bit of a delay because of unprecedented rains. The good thing was that the steady downpour had turned into a mild drizzle and I saw umbrellas opening up around me as people decided to exit the station. I didn't have an umbrella but I didn't need one. I'm a Mumbaiker after all. What was a soft drizzle like this? I stepped out of the station and started walking. Oh, I love walking anywhere in Europe. I love walking along the cobbled streets lined with its splendid architecture. I love the little open-air cafes that dot the roads where I can stop and delight in a decadent hot chocolate if I so wish. I love the startling blue skies and the crisp, cold air. I love looking at the people of the city walk past me, dressed in chic coats and knee-high boots. I wanted to visit the palace and I started walking in that direction. The rain had completely stopped now and the sun was also starting to peek out a little. On my right, I saw people rushing along to get to their workplaces, slightly delayed by the weather. To my left though, a little ahead, there was an open compound where I saw a middle-aged lady in a cream-coloured coat doing something rather curious. She was laying out hula hoops on the sidewalk two at a time, systematically placing them in distinct pairs. She was walking to the shelter of an awning where there were hula hoops as well as small crates and some tattered stools. She picked up two crates and brought them out and she placed these in pairs too. I heard the voice of a girl exclaim something in German as she darted towards the lady. The two women exchanged excited words and the young girl started placing chairs too. The lady pulled out a large sign held it up and started exclaiming loudly in the general direction of the public. I didn't understand what she was saying, but I could see what the sign said very clearly. Eye contact experiment. Now, I'd never heard of this, but now I wanted to know what it was, so I changed tracks immediately and walked over. The lady saw me and said to me in English, Come, this is an eye contact experiment. I'll tell you what it's about. All right then, I said, and stepped into what had now become a colourful square of hula hoops, mats, chairs and crates. I picked a purple hula hoop to stand inside, not knowing what was going to happen next. The lady kept holding up her sign and asking people to come inside. Very soon, spaces filled up. Girls and boys, young and old, college students, elderly couples, a few solo stragglers like me, Even a couple of very corporate-looking people had turned up and they took over some of the crates. A cheerful young couple hopped into the hula hoops beside mine. They were so giggly and cute. The girl looked at me and flashed a vibrant smile and I smiled back. Do you know what they're doing? she asked me. I shook my head. No, not yet, I replied. Oh, okay, she nodded and grinned again. Guess we'll find out. A lady, perhaps in her early 40s, stepped into the hula hoop opposite mine, and she smiled at me. Guten Tag, she said. Guten Tag, I replied. 
the lady in the cream coat came to our midst. She had a pleasant face and a warm smile that reached her eyes. Welcome to eye contact experiment, she said. You have to look into your partner's eyes for as long as you feel comfortable. The only communication you will have is through your eyes. When your connection ends, you can move on to someone else. Take your time, there is no hurry. I looked at my partner. Staring into a stranger's eyes, were any of us really ready for this? What would even happen? Around me, I felt like everyone else was sharing this sentiment. The couple next to me had held hands and were already gazing into each other's eyes and the emotion there was quite evident. Some people looked nervous, some even walked away. Was the prospect of gazing into a stranger's eyes really that daunting? The eyes are the window to the soul, yes, and do we really want someone peering inside? We looked at each other. At first, it felt so weird, looking into a stranger's eyes, not knowing how this would end. Both of us laughed nervously and shifted in our places, but neither of us broke eye contact. I was a little fidgety, breaking the silence with a giggle or two occasionally, but she just stood there with a serene smile on her face, her eyes never once leaving mine. Slowly, I felt my own body calming down. My eyes shifted between hers, but never broke the gaze. I started noticing minute details. Her eyes were a beautiful blue-green speck with a little bit of copper that caught the light. Scant eyelashes and eyebrows framed them and there were fine lines that appeared around her eyes when she smiled. A strand of hair lay across her face, just touching the corner of her right eye, moving every time she blinked. Was it not bothering her? I suppose not, because she looked unfazed. Time passed. Five minutes. Ten. I could sense people around me, the world around me moving about, but it didn't matter. We were standing there in our purple hula hoops, looking at each other. A perfect little bubble of peace tuning out everyone else. And that's it. I don't know when the spell broke, but it broke for both of us together. We blinked at the same time and broke into broad grins. On instinct, we both moved in for a hug. She hugged me like an old friend and said, Thank you. I must go now. And with that, she turned and left. I gazed at her retreating back. I didn't know her name. I didn't know her story, but somehow I felt connected to this lady with the kind eyes. Something about looking into her eyes had doused me in an impenetrable sense of calm. Around me, the crowd had grown. On seeing what we were doing, a lot of passers-by had stopped and joined in. There weren't even enough hula hoops or crates, but that wasn't a deterrent. Pairs had popped up till the far end of the sidewalk. Someone had stepped into the hula hoop in front of me now. A guy, slightly shorter than me, wearing jeans and a brown jacket. Hi, I said. That was it. We looked into each other's eyes. He had almond brown eyes that seemed to hide some form of laughter and were ringed with a very generous set of lashes that made me a little jealous. As we stood there, gazing into each other's eyes, smiling occasionally, a light drizzle started. Soft raindrops started catching in our eyelashes and I began to blink, thinking about the coal I had applied this morning that was probably streaming down my face right now. He blinked too and both of us laughed softly as we tried to blink away the collecting water from our eyes. Without shifting his gaze, he took off his backpack, unzipped it, pulled out a newspaper and held it up above both of us. I grabbed one end of it so it stayed above us like a cover, and a few others around us started to do the same. Somehow, that connected us. We held each other's gaze. There was nothing romantic about it, just some form of inexplicable deep connection. Only in this case, it wasn't meditative. It was actually friendly. I don't know how long we stood there, but like before, 
the connection broke mutually. The rain had also stopped by now. I did have a whole day of exploring ahead of me and I felt that this connection was a beautiful one to end this experience on. We smiled at each other and just as I turned to leave, he said, You have very beautiful eyes. They looked very nice when the raindrops were clinging to them. I won't even deny it. I blushed and I thanked him. My face was probably beetroot red. He smiled back at me the same way one would when sharing an inside joke. A small girl had hopped into the hoop I had just vacated and he turned away to connect with her. I stepped back and I stood there for an entire minute, looking at the crowd that had gathered. Hundreds of connections were being established in a few mere minutes just by looking into each other's eyes. Mutual bonds were forming with absolute strangers. People were dealing with discomfort and someone else, some random passerby on the road was helping them overcome that. This was a hot spot of vulnerability and humanity and connections and it was meditative and beautiful. Eye contact. That's all it took. A few scant minutes of looking into another human's eyes turned out to be enough to find some emotions that were actually common and created a bubble of our own. Our own little private stories that we will stay with. A shared memory that remains unique to us and yet different for everybody. An experience that, although so simple, was so meaningful. Sometimes, small stories come together and form a larger one. And in that moment back in Vienna, I was glad I didn't go straight to the palace. Vienna could have just been another gorgeous European city that I had walked around, but it gave me a story instead. One that's always going to be mine and which you now know. I really hope you enjoy this little anecdote because uh, for me, it's a memory that's been seared into my heart, not just my mind. And even as I sit here, you know, just thinking back to the time that I spent over there, the 45 minutes to an hour that I spent in a very meditative eye contact experience, I think to myself, where is that lady now? What is she doing? And what is that guy who liked my eyes up to? I think I'd like to know, you know. It's a very, very dear memory and it's one that I can never forget. And even now, as I think about it, I have this broad grin on my face. Is it something that any of you would be up for, staring into a stranger's eyes to form connections? I'd like to know, you know, and you can always reach out to me. Let me know if you have any feedback, any comments, any compliments, if you have anything to say, anything to share. Send me a message right here or drop me a DM on my Instagram at Peppy Travel Girl, and I will definitely get back to you. Travels, Tales and Takes with Preeti brings to you tales of wonder from lands far and near. Stories of inspiration from people ever so dear and a little bit of me, Preeti, also known as Peppy Travel Girl. I hope you're all staying safe and are doing well and I hope you have a beautiful day or night ahead. Take care and I will see you next week with a brand new episode. Bye-bye.